subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. In my column, Global Print, this week, I talk about the Indian American community in the U.S., which is going into this very big election in the second week of November. Donald Trump, the incumbent president, is going to contest against Joe Biden, the presidential ca- candidate of the of the Democratic Party. Now, the question that I ask is, what is the Indian American community uh, thinking of? Is it pro-Trump? Is it pro-Biden? What is it? Now, some of the answers are quite interesting. Traditionally, uh, the Indian Americans in the U.S. have lent in favor of the Democrats because this is uh, they seem to be pro-labor, pro-immigrants, and, um, and have pushed f- to make America this sort of melting pot. And there are about 4 million uh, Indian uh, Americans of Indian origin in the U.S. today and about 2 million, about half of those are of voting age. Now, why is the Indian American community become so important in this particular election? First of all, Kamala Harris, who uh, identifies both as black. Uh, her father was uh, Jamaican. He was Jamaican black. Her mother, as we all know by now, was South Indian. But Kamala Harris identifies as black. But in this election, has made it a point to root for her South Indian heritage, talk about her mother, Shamla Gopal, and her grandfather, how she spent holidays in Tamil Nadu. And what is she trying to do? She's trying to reach out to the very powerful, very tiny, but very powerful, very influential Indian American community in the U.S., which has done really well, and it's often called the model minority. So the Joe Biden, Kamala Harris uh, team reaching out to the Indians. In fact, on uh, August 15th, Indian Independence Day, the, the Democrats, that's Biden ha- and Harris, put out a document which said that, that, they, that, you know, that the India-U.S. relationship is really strong and that they would continue to push it if they came to power. On the other hand, you have Trump and you've seen how Prime Minister Modi and Donald Trump have had this very exhibitionistic kind of relationship these last several years. Last year in Houston, Texas, Modi uh, was um, was invited there and there was this big, big uh, celebration of Prime Minister Modi at the Howdy Modi event. And of course, I mean, we all know how Donald Trump came. Prime Minister Modi held him by the hand and they did a chakkar of, the, of that stadium. Now, it was here in this Howdy Modi event that the Prime Minister says, Apki bar or Agli bar Trump Sarkar. That is followed earlier this year in February by this rapturous red carpet welcome that Trump and his family, his daughter Ivanka, son-in-law Jared Kushner and the other uh, Trump team are given in Ahmedabad and then Agra with the Red Fort and in Delhi. What does that mean? I would say, and I'm arguing in my column, that the Indian government on the face of it is saying that we are non-partisan, we are not going to tell you Uh, who to vote for. You are Americans. We have nothing to do with your election. That's the official position. And in fact, when uh, External Affairs uh, S. Jay Shankar was asked this question a few days ago uh, in an interview, he said this. He said, look, we have very good relations with every uh, U.S. uh, administration. The last four presidents, two have been Democrats, two have been Republican, George Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump. But India has gone from strength to strength. And while he didn't uh, talk about this, but, you know, he was obviously indicating that it was during the Manmohan Singh Congress era in India and the George Bush Republican era that the Indo-US nuclear deal was signed. After that, the Barack, o- Barack Obama was invited to Delhi. You know, things got better and better. So Jayshankar said, this is a non-partisan approach. India has bipartisan consensus. Uh, the elite loves us. You know, people are in favor of India. And he was only partially right. Because what Jayashankar was not saying was, and he's the external affairs minister and he cannot say something like this, but it's very clear that behind the scenes, the Modi government or Modi's India would prefer to do business with Trump. He's a much more predictable commodity. You know, he he talks so much. We all know he tweets and he talks. 
And so you know exactly what he's thinking. He's anti-China right now. That suits India just fine because India has China at the gates. There have been um, stand. There has been more than a two-month-long standoff in Ladakh. New fronts are being opened even as we speak. So having the world's most powerful country on your side on the China issue, nothing could be better than that. Biden has promised, of course, to also to carry that forward. But you know, a bird in hand. You know that you know Trump. You know that he is um, that that he that he is now that a trade deal with China, for example, is no longer on the cards. You know that he is pushing the America First agenda, and you know that in some ways democracies between the world's oldest and the world's largest democracies will play a role. So never mind the uh, the. Um, Never mind how Trump talks. Never mind what what else Prime Minister Modi does inside the country in terms of expanding the Hindutva agenda. But at least on the India-U.S. relation relationship, there is nobody better, at least today, than Prime Minister Modi to push this relationship forward. So that's what we have at the moment, which is so interesting: is that you have this very small model minority. Indian American community, very influential. You name it: Sundar Pichai, uh, Hasan Minhaj, uh, you know, a variety of other bankers, uh, people who are sort of multi-millionaires, billionaires, uh, have have played a, a a role and have made their presence felt in America. Here's one more fact: Last time around in 2016, when Hillary Clinton lost the election to Donald Trump, and the way the American system works is very different. From the Indian uh, election system, where we are sort of first past the post, so whoever gets the most votes becomes prime minister in America. It's the electoral college, and that's another um, explainer, another story. But what happened last time around in 2016 was that 77 percent of the Indian American community voted in favor of Hillary Clinton, um, and in fact, Clinton got more votes than uh, Trump did. But because of the electoral college, which he carried, Trump won the election. Now the math has been done by both sides, and um, it seems that when you look at the data, there are three swing states: Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And it seems that Trump won these three states by very, very thin margins. He won Michigan by 0.2 percent. He won Pennsylvania by 0.7 percent. And Wisconsin by 0.8 percent, and it also seems that the Indian American community is spread out in all these states, plus five others also, which are Arizona, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, and Georgia. So, if the Indian Americans, if you were to woo them, if you were to push yourself um, and and you know persuade them to vote for you, they could make a big difference. Another. Factor in this right now, just a factor, is Nikki Haley.、Um, her real name is Nimrita. Her her parents are a Sikh family. Nimrita Randhawa changed her name to Nikki. Married a man called Michael Haley. Became Haley. So, at the moment, Trump's vice presidential con、uh, contender is Mike Pence, a very very boring man who has very little to say for himself. But imagine if Nikki Haley were to take his place. You would have another woman of Indian origin who would be head to head with Kamala Harris, and then of course there would be the Trump、uh, and Joe Biden contest. So watch this space. We will follow the presidential election, tell you what it's what's going on, what's happening,、uh, and、uh, and if you have any questions, any comments, please do write to us. This is Jyoti Malhotra for the Print. Please do read my column, Global Print, and please write to us. Follow our YouTube channel, and、um, thank you so much for watching.